paper the story on the European Open Science Clouds. In short, EOSC started actually in 2016 with Carlos Mudas wanting to have uh, to ensure basically that all the research data that are being produced that they are actually um, used to their full potential. In 2000, back to 2016, and this tradition is still going on, researchers get public funding for performing their research. They publish in research publications. They have their research data, but after the publication lifetime and the publication is out in the journals, hardly anything happens with this research data yet. It's not a common practice, at, at least, let's say. Uh, so sorry to interrupt, uh, but your camera is still is is off. Do you mind switching it on? Oh, don't worry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. So, and normally you should be able to see me. Okay, Astrid. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to recap a little bit from here. Okay, and. Let me quickly swap the mode. Okay, so going back to the story of research data, Carlos Mudas actually uh, advised that um, research data should be reused and brought together in order that more could uh, more findings and scientific findings and innovation could get out of that. In 2017, based on the initial thought of Carlos Mudas. There was the EOS declaration signed in Brussels on the 10th of July. And this EOS declaration basically wants to stop the, uh, the image or the current practice that's going on in the research world. In order to speak, this picture actually depicts what's currently has been going on. So every country, every region, every research institution even has and produces research data. Most of the time, people are not aware where these research data are residing, in fact, and also they are not made interoperable. If you want to, for instance, combine a research data set on mobility from Italy and together with Belgium, this will be very hard to do because no, there is no way of combining the data according to the, uh, the lack of a common data model, the, uh, the lack of interoperability, the lack of metadata standards for sharing the data also, most of the times, also no tesori or ontologies exist. So in order to ensure the sharing of data, this was actually the vision, uh, the vision that was put forward. To have and combine data from several sources and to ensure that EOSC as a portal could help researchers and other uh, public parties, private parties, and the public at large to find the required research data and that EOS could serve like a kind of a service catalog where you have one highway through which all the research data could be uh, used. There were several models at the time being uh, researched and, and, and looked after what actually would fit and do the job. And they actually came up with a federated data model that would work best for with regards to EOSC in terms of resources, services, governance, also costs. And they uh, envisaged that the cost for making a federated model would actually be not that high, um, that the acceptance by the member states and the stakeholders could be quite high but that some things were needed. And in this talk, we will for sure focus on the way how interoperability matters if you want to build a federated data model. Based on all the information on EOSC and the declaration signed in 2017, a, strate a strategic roadmap was signed in 2018. And based on that, there were EOSC, an EOSC governance board was installed an executive board was installed and under that executive board there were six uh, working groups in EOSC that were actually trying to find out what was required in order to build that EOSC landscape. Uh, within this field one uh, work in particular is of mention today and that's the EOSC uh, in, uh, interoperability framework. I put some links here, so if you would like to review this this uh, information, this obviously is is open um, with regards to EOSC. And in the EOSC interoperability framework, there were four major things put forward. So first of all, 
they claimed, and it's not with a priority, it's just the way how it is mentioned. So a technical interoperability is required. So technical interoperability, it comes down to the exchange of data. It comes down to the uh, exchange between different infrastructures, but also the services that go, uh, go aside with that. So everything needs to be combined in a technical layer. But obviously, and then I come back to point number two, this only makes sense if you have also a semantic interoperability, meaning that you need unambiguous shared meaning of the metadata and the data you're actually sharing. This can, for instance, be done uh, in ontologies and thesauri, but at least this is required in order to make the, that the data that you would reuse are making sense. This uh, will require the need of a minimal set of a common metadata formats. At this point in time, many different metadata standards are existing. So it's not that there is none existing. The thing is just that they are existing too much. And the thing on mapping them towards each other is quite a burden. And hardly anyone is doing that. Everybody's making an own new metadata format when they think it's required. However, if this is the way to go forward, that's another thing. Maybe we should first try more to see whether the semantics in between this metadata standards are and can be aligned and to what extent they can be mapped towards each other. A third point put forward in the interoperability framework document was the organizational interoperability. Because if you have data installed in your own research data repository with some semantics, this semantics obviously is also based on your context where you're residing on the organizational processes that are linked towards that, um, towards that semantics, towards that data capture process. So some kind of in organizational interoperability obviously is also required. However, this most of the times is forgotten if people are speaking about interoperability terms. Part one was the legal interoperability that's required. So if you want to combine data from several sources, from EOS, from wherever places, there are obviously some regulations, internal regulations, but also to a large extent, external regulations, which you need to take into account. Some policy measures that might be drafted, which impact your, uh, the manner how you can reach this interoperability. So in EOSC, this was interoperability is, uh, was, and still is actually a very important uh, topic, obviously, is because this is really what's required in order to make the things happen. Now, this is not only in the EOSC landscape, uh, a term that's predominant. It's also, for instance, was last week during the endorsed conference, which was held, uh, which is a conference based on the ISA Square Commission previously, uh, that's being installed by European Commission. And one of the things that was most important to foster data uh, data linking across sectors, not only the public sector, but to combine data from the public sector, the private sector, uh, the industry, and so forth, also across different domains. The one thing that was the most prominent, and you see here the percentages that I, I just made a, a, a print screen actually during uh, the talks, that was that alignment of metadata standards, vocabulary, and semantics really is tribal in order to get to take the next step forward. So that brings me a little bit back to my story. So if you see all these things are really required and necessary, what does that mean then in the Flemish context? So in Flanders, there was a Regierakkoord, which is an agreement of the Flemish government. And uh, for the term 2019 to 2024, it was decided that research data should be combined as much as possible, should be made public as much as possible. And uh, um, based on the requirement that they receive public Flemish money. In order to operalize uh, this, uh, this note, there was uh, a decree where the Flemish Open Science Board was created. Um, this note can be found, there are some references here, but would basically 
was said is that the Flemish Research Data Network, which is the operationalization of the Flemish Open Science Board, needs to tackle three big things. In, uh, uh, for one, the knowledge hub in order to share expertise, not only between the research data management stewards, but in between all the stakeholders involved in research data. Secondly, a data hub where the research data can actually be combined. And uh, thirdly, a discovery hub where the metadata of this research data can be provided to FRIS and from FRIS, there could be coupled to EOSC in order that they become findable. So that brings me to what FRIS basically is. So what FRIS is, is a public uh, research information portal. You will see here a, a small print screen of this portal down uh, the image and the link towards this uh, portal is researchportal.be. This research portal has been used um, for many years already uh, in order to disclose information on public funded research in Flanders uh, openly to whoever wants to use it. At the moment, there is only research, there is information available on researchers, organizations, projects, and publications, but based on decrees from the Flemish government, the BOF, the, which is the special research fund and the industrial research funds provided by the Flemish government, this will be enlarged. So there will also be an obligation, for instance, to the Flemish universities, uh, universities to include research data into this portal. Also, the other uh, stakeholders involved, the higher education colleges, also the strategic research centers and the uh, Flemish scientific institutions, they all get in their agreements with the Flemish government's obligations to provide this information to FRIS uh, with some specific deadlines. So if we want to have indeed research data being discoverable to FRIS, yeah, then we need some interoperability, we need some metadata standard harmonization work. Um, I might skip this slide. So what you, sorry, what I, you see in the previous slide is what we have thus far in FRIS. So these four objects, what we will do in the near future is to enlarge this picture. We will ensure that the links between all these uh, objects are made closer towards each other, but it's also uh, an enlargement, for instance, with data infrastructure and information on patents. It's not only about the objects that there is an uh, extension going forward, but also on the, the people and the stakeholders who are actually delivering the research information. So previously, it was most of the times coming down to the universities that were providing the information. Now the whole picture, the whole research picture will be involved. So meaning the Flemish higher education colleges, also the strategic research centers and the scientific uh, institutions. Now, having set the scene where we're actually working, let's go and take a dive into how we actually develop this Flemish application profile for research data sets that will be used in FRIS. So first of all, what we have to do, and which basically might seem a little bit awkward, is to define what research data actually are with all the stakeholders we have. Because this really sets the scene what we want to have and what we want to disclose through uh, the uh, through the first portal. There are many definitions out, but for now we have convened in Flanders on this definition, which is quite broad as it also, for instance, uh, includes secondary data uh, obtained from uh, from third parties. It also discloses not only documents uh, and, and software, for instance, but also discloses information on, for instance, biological materials. Now, what does interoperability then essentially mean in this process? So it means interoperability in this respect that we would have to know through this portal where this data are, uh, what they are about, and we have to know it as good, qualitatively at least, eh? as if they were the, the, the data of the portal itself, the metadata of the portal. So that means that the, re, the information user that uses the FRIS portal would not have to know any semantics, any processes that are going on on the institutions that are actually providing this information. Everything should be looked and treated the same way. 
So this needs that the information being sent needs to be contextualized uh, when it's sent. Uh, and and uh, so this needs a convergence, uh, for instance, to a common metadata model. That's a, a question. That's one of the options one can take. Or you need to have an interoperation among many metadata models, but then you need a mapping toward from one model to each other. So having around uh, 25 stakeholders that are all having their research data created, we had to see what was the best option to take. And I can already uh, yeah, drop you a line that it was the first one, the conversions on a common metadata model, but a high level metadata model. The principles we were using is that um, the difference between metadata and data is the, the mode of use is being different. Metadata is not there just for the data, but it is essential that it's useful for users, for services, and for computing resources. It should make sense to have them. It's just not just merely a description. It's just in, uh, it's in order to ensure that it's useful for any, for any other party. It's also not just for the description and the discovery, it also is for the contextualization. So how relevant are the metadata provided to the data? How qualitative are the data? Are there restrictions towards the data that we're wanting to use in terms of uh, li yeah, license agreements, uh, third party agreements, disclosures, or other legal uh, restrictions or ethical restrictions even? A fourth one is that the metadata should be machine understandable in order that they can also be harvested by other services that would like to use them as well. Metadata should also be relevant, I mean, and it should be linked towards other information sources already on the FRIS portal, for instance, with regards to projects, with regards to publication outcome, whenever possible. The implications of these principles basically come down to five points that need to be tackled. So the syntax, what the, the metadata cover actually, there should be created according to objects and properties. The semantics, there should be relationships and preferably also include the most often problem of multilinguality. However, as we are restricted to Flanders, this has not yet come into play. There should also be uh, temporal information, should also be uh, ensure that there is the metadata are, have a profound way of being, uh, have a high level of integrity, and that they're represented in some form of first order logic. I'm not going further into detail there. If there are questions later on, just, just tell me and I will reach out. So, these are basically, if you would say, are quite general uh, principles in order to draft the metadata scheme. So when it comes down to research data, we also are checking for research data, uh, metadata guidelines that were being drafted. And the ones that we had used actually are the ones of the GoFair project, which defines uh, four different um, principles according to the FAIR acronym. FAIR standing for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So as you will see, uh, findable means that the metadata should be assigned with a global, unique, and persistent identifier, basically already immediately posing some, uh, some urgencies and, and requests on the metadata scheme we're uh, making. Data are described with rich met metadata. Metadata are clearly and explicitly and include the identifier of the data they describe, and they are registered or indexed in a searchable resource. So if we want that the metadata and FRIS are findable, this is the one things we have to take into account. With regards to accessibility, they should be retrieved by their identifier using a standardized communication protocol and they should be accessible even when the data are no longer available. So meaning that metadata will, will, um, will live beyond the lifetime of the research data itself. Metadata should also be interoperable. So they should be uh, handled in a common way in order that machines can read it 
and that's, uh, that applies actually uh, so that it's used as a formal, accessible, shared and broadly applicable, applicable language for knowledge representation. They should use vocabularies that follow the FAIR principles, so there should be a thesaurus or an ontology based on that, and there should be uh, qualified references to other metadata schemes whenever applicable, obviously. With regards to the reusable facts, uh, this comes down to the fact that the metadata should ensure that there are um, that they meet, uh, for instance, um, common agreements that are made in disciplines uh, in order that they can be reused in the same discipline. As you can understand, many research uh, disciplines have their own metadata uh, standards in place. Based on all these four uh, specific FAIR uh, metadata principles, we were starting off. So first we were installing a governance structure, like who is involved in this, uh, in this work. And for this, we directed our question to the Flemish Open Science Board, and we had in a working group on uh, metadata and standardization, which is re with a representation of all Flemish research universities, uh, representation of the higher education colleges, which are currently building a digital open science platform, abbreviated as DOSP, the four representatives of the uh, uh, also four re strategic research centers, and next the Flemish uh, scientific institutions and the research funders. So this is quite necessary that you have this kind of governance structure because later on you will see in the process that we no need to know who actually will be involved when we will speak about the semantics and also about the processes that are coming into place when you look at the research data. These are the people most often residing, for instance, in research coordination offices or libraries that are actually handling the research data themselves through metadata catalogs, for instance, that already have experience with that uh, towards research publications uh, with making data, uh, publication repositories. So these people were included in a working group. Then we were checking actually what we needed to do. Uh, so would we make and draft a new metadata model or would we rather start from a commonly existing uh, metadata model, a generic metadata model that's already widely in use and that's existing for many years already. In that regard, we were review, reviewing several metadata, generic metadata models and we considered the one of data sites, the, the 4.3 model that was uh, concluded in 2019 as one of the best options to go. This is also due to some extent to the Flemish context because uh, the data site model um, is already being mapped towards Serif. There are Serif XML guidelines to map towards data sites. Data site that's also being used already on open air, a platform that discloses publications but also research data sets openly. So in because this fact and because Fris is built on Serif, it was more easily to also look at data sites as a first glance because other than in the next stage when we are really implementing the metadata model in Fris, then you can draft the link towards open air data site Serif and that meta model. So then the step to take is not as big as would have been for instance with a retrie data uh, metadata model. Then what we have been uh, doing is actually to check how the data site model is built and what we actually want to be present, uh, present in FRIS. So obviously not all the metadata uh, fields of data site will be relevant in the context of FRIS. So therefore we were checking what's relevant and also what's the concept that's being denoted in the metadata scheme of data site. We were having discussions on what an identifier would mean towards us. We were having discussions, for instance, also what a contributor would be, because the data site model is quite large. They have more than 17 roles on contributors, but do we really want to include 17 contributor roles in Fris, for instance? And also, if you look at roles that we would like to include in Fris, is the meaning of the concepts 
being used in data sites, exactly the same as we want to intend with that. So then we were actually checking line by line what data site had. So this is just a small glimpse of, of data site 4.3. And you will see here, for instance, what an identifier is. This is semantically defined by data site, which is already very nice for a, for a metadata model. Not all metadata models in the world have this. So this is very nice to start off. And then we also saw, for instance, the allowed values, the examples and the other constraints that were put forward by the data site. And we were going over each of these facts and then checking whether there was a common agreement or not. And this was done basically through what, what happens in data governance with so-called semantic cycles of reconciliation, where every information provider is checking basically what's technically feasible, not only with the technical experts, but also with the business domain experts who are actually having to store the information once the repositories, the metadata models are being constructed. What they think that's required with regards to the research information world. And then they're checking that towards what we have proposed as a generic metadata, metadata, metadata model on the Flemish level. So each time we were actually checking something, it was always coming down to checking what all institutions, and it were not two, it were close to 25, 27 institutions who were thinking, and then checking whether this would be, whether we found a common agreement where we could have more like a high level um, generic metadata model. We continued this kind of cycle until we actually drafted our metadata model. And as you will see, there were some kind of iterations going on. So the model that has been concluded and has been agreed upon is the version 1.7 TER model. The char characteristics of that model are not completely the same, I would say, as data sites. So data sites um, has many um, uh, properties. We have 15 that originate from data side, but we expanded some of them. So you see that there is an enlargement and I will in the second slide go into the details why we actually needed to do that. You will see in this scheme the term that is being used and the metadata model in Flanders. You will see the correspondence with the data side term, the link actually to the properties as defined in the 4.3 model of uh, data side. Then you will see an extra field where it's mandatory, mandatory if applicable, recommended or optional. And here we already deviated from the data site scheme. And this was required because the Frisk portal and this, thus this metadata scheme will be used actually to see how open science in Flanders is evolving. So in order to do that, there were some KPIs defined. And based on these KPIs, some of these metadata fields are really required in order to allow for an automated measurement on these KPI measures. So this already was something we contextualized, if you want to say. And there also is some indication whether this has been realized according to a KPI implication or not. Then there were also some discussions going on on the values that are allowed actually towards these identifiers. So if you would have a look at the, one of the previous slides, I will share my slides later on, you would see that in the data site scheme, the preferred value for an identifier is DOI. While here in Flanders, we also allow for other identifiers in order to ensure that the metadata um, and the data can be uh, found. The definitions and the value and examples we used are most of the times quite in line, I would say, with data sites. Sometimes some uh, additions have been made, but examples and use cases are being, uh, uh, are being brought up and added to the model in order to ensure that there, we have all a common understanding how to use this metadata field. So we had also some expansions on the metadata model, as I just told you about. And these metadata uh, model expansions uh, were three fields that were deduplicated and three new fields that were inserted. So we have deduplicated, for instance, the metadata field on uh, description. 
basically with uh, towards one that is abstract and another one is description the description is a more formal uh, technical uh, description while the abstract is being used in fris in order to allow for searches so in this way we can ensure that for instance the description slash abstract can be made an obligatory field, a mandatory field, while the other description is, for instance, optional. Optional. This has been done towards that field. With regards to subject, there was also a distinction made between research discipline and keywords. Research disciplines are being used as filters on the FRIS portal and keywords are used in the search terms. So these are two different fields in FRIS and there were none coinciding with the metadata scheme of, um, of data sites. So therefore, we deduplicated that subject field. The third one we deduplicated was the rights field. We have made an expansion towards, on the one hand, the licenses on the data, and on the other end, the access rights towards the data. So this is also, the licenses and the access rights can be also visualized here. And these are being used in the KPI implications. So we needed some more detail level than, was, than, than what was available basically in data sites. So if you look at the access right, we have here now values open, embargoed, and restricted or closed. These are really values that are imposed on the Flemish level, but not, not present in uh, the data site model. But they allow us for measuring the uh, KPI uh, that's required to be measured as from 2022. And you will see then, because it's a KPI requ request, it's a mandatory field. If you look at the license fields, what that has become, that for, there are, for instance, values like there is no license, it's a, zero, zero, uh, a CC0 license, or a CC by uh, 4.0 license. So this is another kind of license um, that is possible, and there will be a, maze, uh, a list made actually with some uh, with some values in that that can be used. For now, this is recommended, but as from 2023, this will be mandatory due to the fact that it has been take, uh, taken into uh, account with regards to the KPI monitoring. Next to that, we also had uh, three uh, new. Uh, metadata uh, properties. So one of them was the open format, which is not existing in uh, in data sites, one on the legitimate opt-out options, and one on the fair data label. All of the three also coincide with the KPI implications that we have in Flanders. So meaning that we are not only have created a metadata model based on an international standard, data site 4.3, we have contextualized it to the Flemish context. We have ensured that we know what's mandatory, obligatory, uh, optional or uh, recommended. But we also have extended the metadata model towards a manner that can be used in order to automate KPIs on open science in Flanders. That being said, I'm not yet there, but almost. What uh, is next? Next is we have to implement this. We have to implement this and one, this is, has to be due, this has to be due by December 31st of 2021, this year does. So that means that we have to ensure that the metadata model is built in in FRIS, but also in these 25 to 27 stakeholder systems. Secondly, we have to ensure that the linkage between the metadata fields of data, for instance, and projects are also uh, yeah, linking towards each other. In order to measure the KPIs, this means, in fact, that the project metadata model had to be extended with a DMP attribute and a DMP identifier. So this is the work that we have currently presented. And this brings me to, to my conclusion that we have created a Flemish application profile for metadata standards based on data sites 4.3, uh, the standards, but we have contextualized it to the Flemish, uh, Flemish understanding. We have ensured that semantics are, uh, are 
correct, uh, correctly understood and unambiguously understood by all that are being used in the information. And thirdly, we have ensured that also metrics can be drafted for that in, in order to see how open science in Flanders is evolving. That being said, I open the floor for questions. There are already two questions in the chat. Yeah. One from Jochen and one from Peter. Let me quickly check where the where I can see the questions. Can you read them in the meanwhile? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so Jochen asks, I would like to know more where first order logic is used in the Fris metadata uh, schema. Yeah, that is something that's a, a question quite in depth. Um, so we will I will come back to that later on maybe. So I think best that Jochen that you sent me an email in order to discuss that. And the second question, where can you find that? Right, I, yeah, I see it. The, in the public chat, uh, Peter asks, is it possible that the repo isn't public? That can be the case because at first glance, this was a private conversation until we had a common metadata model. Yeah, but I will ensure that, that it's available on a, on a public place. If you want to drop me a line, I can send you the information. And so it's not a not a secret. Do uh, you know if uh, Brussels Gewest also has the same system of metadata? So I don't know. Um, so um, for now, Brussels at least doesn't have a, a, as an information portal on research information. Um, so at the balloon part, they also uh, they are creating something like that, but it's not the way. so in Flanders we're quite uh, let's say ahead of things in the way that we have already an information portal on several of these research information objects. This is not the case in the balloon region nor in the Brussels region, and we're also one of the first actually to have the metadata model implemented in such an information model together with metrics on open science. This is also hardly done. Would it, be a, hard, yeah. Yeah. would it be hard to copy paste the same methodology? No, the methodology is is, uh, is not rocket science, I would say. Uh, it's about discussions in between stakeholders and often going uh, and ensuring, ensuring that the heads are in the same direction, basically. First, that needs to be put and then you can go and drill down to the details and to contextualize everything. Are there other questions? Um, there is a question in the chat from Mark and also from uh, Jochen. I take a data site. Is, is that a question? That is also yeah. XML based. Yes, that's correct, Mark. And then the second one of Mark are there any relations? No, no. Yeah, with regards to as uh, DCAT AP, there are no, I mean, application profiles for research data at, at this point in time. So they have them indeed for open government data, 
but research data is lacking there and that's the reason why we're also participating in conferences like the endorse conference in order to ensure that research data would also be established as an application profile there what we do have is for instance communities like eurochris that's an international organization for common european research information uh, formats the link to that one is here and these communities are building actually these common metadata models and that uh, have semantics with them aligned the the metadata standard that they are using is i'm creating a series Is this not too much isolating research from government data and the Google World Wide Web? Yeah, in some part it is. On the other hand, there are initiatives coming in like this endorsed conference and the particular purpose there was actually to bridge the gap between all these different initiatives that are coming up because, I mean, metadata standards are popping up like mushrooms from the, from the ground. But the big, the big thing is actually to how to combine all these metadata standards together, how to create a, some kind of over uh, a metadata model on the metadata models let's say and this needs resources this needs time this needs money but also speaking together in the same language and this is quite hard at this point in time because there's no instance that's actually providing this money so that was actually one of the things that came out of the discussion of the North conference previous week Yes, <laughs> that's true, Mark. Then there is also one uh, question from Jochen, a bit. Yeah. Above the, yeah. I've been the final logic now. This is using the extended serif model, yes, and we'll continue to use the extended serif model for data sets. That's true. Yeah. Mark is again typing. You can turn on your mic if you want, Mark. Maybe that's easier. Or anyone else, if you have a question. You should be able to hear me now. Yes, we hear okay. you. Okay, always pushing three buttons. Uh, coming back to the fact that uh, Fris is now making their own XML schema, I, I heard a complete explanation about, about where you are deviating from uh, data sites. Is the end result then in either direction compatible? Or, I mean, if it validates, no. okay. It's not because we have uh, we have some, for instance, uh, fields. Um, so if you have a deduplication, yes, you can do that. But if so, for some entries, for instance, like the open format, there's there's no nothing there. Yeah, we can put it on the format, but that's not exactly what we actually intend with our thing. So um, yeah, I would say no, no. Okay. Cool. There are three fields, yeah, that are left. For instance, also the legitimate opt-out. This is something that's being discussed quite often, actually, in the European context, because they think it's really valuable to have this kind of information. But because no classification exists, nobody is ever trying to get it in. So while it actually is already providing very valid information on why people are not opening up their their uh, research data and could provide some indications for drafting a policy on that. And the third one is the fair data label and the fair data label who is aware of the research context and all the projects that's going on fair. Um, you know that there's quite some discussion and debate going on on what a fair data label would mean and how this even can be included. So there are, for instance, there are, you can measure fair on the level of the metadata, but more often the fair is measured on the level of the data itself. And the, then the question also comes down to what fare are you actually measuring and are you focusing first on the on the findable and accessible or are you also taking into account interoperable and reusable and what policy measures are behind that when you're actually wanting to me measure fare. So that's the reason why most of the time you, you will never ever experience actually someone having the fare included yet. But I, I think for fare there will be a counterpart 
whether that will be then exactly the same as we will have in Flanders, that's another question. Maybe I can come back to the to the linked data as well. Are there any plans at first to? I know there is something like a, a, a DCAT AP mapping for a data site. Um, I don't know. Is there is there already something in the plan to go that route? Not yet, because in uh, the Flemish Open Science Board, we're trying to do many things at the same time in order to get this actually off the ground. And while this is very valuable to do that, we did not yet have this in, into our scheme yet. Also, another question from Jochen in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's interested in the mapping between data site and Serif. That's something that's currently going on in the Eurochris group. So, there are also uh, Serif guidelines on, on that. Huh? So, I can send you maybe the, the guidelines later on, Jochen. If you drop uh, somewhere your mail address, that would be. And an answer from Pascal to Mark's question. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we uh, have reached also the, our time for today uh, or for this session. Um, we said it would take 45 minutes. So I suggest that I stop the official recording and we can keep the chat going for maybe a minute or two longer if there are more questions. A with story on the European Open Science 